The Heartbleed incident at NCSA was an interesting experience in proactive management. The leader of the incident response team saw a posting about problems with OpenSSL the day before things really came out. The posting was on a security list he was a member of. He felt that the problem looked like it could be a bad one, so he had the team begin to do more monitoring for alerts that could be related. At the time, all the information was coming out about Heartbleed. The team knew it was going to be bad. Bad in the sense that it was going to affect everyone, and that the team had no idea how to check for it. Once there was some idea of how to check for the issue, and that it was limited to only certain SSL stacks, the team was able to begin an investigation. Many networks would have to scan everything looking at ports like 443 and a few other ports that SSL is on. NCSA is fortunate to be running the BRO system. BRO can identify any protocol that is using SSL. Because of this, the team was able to create a list of known servers running the version of SSL that was a concern based on information from BRO. Then, using that list, the team was able to use a script that had been developed to scan each of those servers and were able to identify very quickly which systems were vulnerable to Heartbleed. A lot of time was spent with communications on this incident. Discussion between the internal NCSA security team and the campus security team talked at great lengths about what to do with the issue. The question was what to do with the known vulnerable system. Should they be blocked or was it safe to let them run? These were things that needed to be decided since much of the problem was unknown. It was known that passwords were vulnerable to Heartbleed, but what would the real impact be to systems and the university? This slide shows a test of using an exploit on the Heartbleed vulnerability. This memory dump is from a router on the system that an admin had changed the password to a few months ago. If you look near the bottom of the listing, you can see the new password that had been set in plain text. This was information that was just sitting in memory and accessible via the exploit. This password change had been sitting there for a few months, and the team was able to extract it because of the Heartbleed vulnerability. Now, had this memory been overwritten at some point, this would not have been accessible, but this shows just how much of an issue it could have been. Even after a few months, this memory location still held important information. This is how the team tested all the known servers that had issues. They ran the script against them and looked for memory blocks to be returned. If a block was returned, then that system was vulnerable to Heartbleed. If nothing was returned, that system was clear. Using a secure wiki, the team created a list of vulnerable systems. The response team then opened that wiki page to all the admins of the affected system and instructed them to address the issue as soon as possible. The admins were told that if the issue was not addressed by the end of the business day, their systems would be taken off the network and blocked. The systems were left blocked until the admins came up with a plan to address the issue and then fix the issue. Finally, an email was sent to all staff explaining what Heartbleed was and what actions were being taken concerning it. The staff was also encouraged to change their passwords on their campus systems. There was also information in the email about how this was most likely going to affect all their user accounts on anything internet related, like Facebook, Gmail, etc., and that they'd probably want to change those passwords too. After the initial scan, the team used the testing script along with Bro and Splunk to create a dashboard item on their Splunk page. This item was linked to a routine that monitored the system, and any time an SSL service was detected, the test script was run to see if it was vulnerable. If the service was vulnerable, a notice was put up on the dashboard identifying the system. The dashboard item would then list all the vulnerable systems so that the team could keep track of them. As the systems were patched, the dashboard item was automatically updated to let the team know the service was fixed. This allowed the team to know what systems were vulnerable and be able to notify the admins for those systems and get them working on patching the system. The Bro team worked hard to develop an SSL protocol analyzer so that Bro could perform network monitoring looking for these problems. The recovery process was a lot of work for the admins. They had to both patch their system and reboot them. 
Since this was a running service, the patch alone would not fix the problem. Several admins insisted that they had patched their systems and one of them back online, but when the team tested them, they still found them vulnerable. This was because no restart had taken place and the new patched software was not yet running. Systems were not let back on the network until they were patched and rebooted and that the Splunk dashboard item showed them as being fixed. Another great thing about the dashboard item is that it is just something sitting there now, always on. So if someone brings up an old system, the security team is quickly notified that a system is online and vulnerable to the Heartbleed attack. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.